Sandra Humanick. I'm a senior emergency medical dispatcher and I've been with Toronto Paramedic Services for 27 years. I was in university and I didn't know what path I wanted to follow so I left there and I started my career as a communicator and a dispatcher with Toronto Police and moved over to Toronto EMS where I've stayed and enjoyed the last 27 years. Being a communicator is very special to me because that means that I can, I can help people every day and that's my, my biggest passion is to know that every person that calls me I'm, I provide help to them be it moral support, obviously sending emergency medical support, that's the big one, but just being there to listen to them and help them and guide them through it until the ambulance arrives. We are so excited that Sandra's been selected for this award. You couldn't think of somebody who's more richly deserving of an honour like this. She is so compassionate for not only the public, the stakeholders that we deal with day in, day out, but also the colleagues that she works with every day. Sandra's such a positive person. She's always ready to help. She's always looking for ways to cheer people up, to look out for people, to go that extra mile. She really exemplifies quality service in everything that she does, every day that she works. Winning this award means so much to me. It's excellent. I mean, I give 100% to my job every day that I'm here, and, and to be recognized for, for doing that is, is just awesome. I just, yeah, I'm a, I'm a humble, stay-behind-the-scenes person, and this is amazing. First and foremost, what we want the public to know is what happens when they call 911 in need of an ambulance. The most important thing and the first question I'm going to ask is where do you need us? So it's very important that you know where the ambulance is needed so we can get them started in that direction to help you. Also, we are going to ask you a lot of questions, a big series of questions, and it doesn't delay the ambulance in any way whatsoever. It gives us the information to provide you with the right resource at the right time. And by the way, it's also very important to know that we can provide service in 150 different languages. So if, lang if English is not your first language, we can connect you immediately with a translator. Same information, we'll go through all the call, get you the right resource at the right time. I went to the University of Guelph for a degree in criminal justice and law and security administration. While in university, I volunteered with Daily Bread Food Bank here in Toronto, and I worked the intake, so I learned a lot about administration, and I dealt with uh, varying linguistic backgrounds for the individuals that came in to access that service. Out of university, I went to work for the revenue division of the City of Toronto. Um, it was my first real experience of telecommunications. I uh, learned overwhelming call volumes. Through ed, my education and work experience and volunteering, I learned that I was really good at stress management and dealing with conflict. Um, and also with my background in telecommunications, I figured something in the emergency services would be uh, extremely appealing to me. Uh, so I applied to the fire service, did my critical examination interview, and here I am today. Being a communicator with Toronto Fire Services is something pretty special. I have hundreds of opportunities a day to really do something meaningful and assist the public. Um, everything from simple non-emergency calls to, you know, closest directions for an individual to drop off donations at a firehouse to the really emergency calls, uh, people trapped in a burning building providing life-saving instructions to uh, assisting the firefighters out in the field with the resources and necessary equipment that they need to get their job done. Um, it's a small contribution and it seems to be kind of in the backlight, but uh, I'm, I'm glad to do it every day. Tyler received the Communicator of the Year Award this year based on peer selection. And when I was reviewing the nominations for the award, uh, Tyler's name came up several times, uh, basically um, due to his positive attitude, um, his support of his co-workers, his willingness to do his job and, and to do it well, especially considering the short time that he's been in the service. Um, he's shown over and over again that um, he will, he's willing to stay late to help out and, um, and in a, particularly in an incident that just happened a couple of weeks ago, we had a very bad storm and we were really short staffed and Tyler offered to stay after shift and they handled almost double the number of calls that we normally handle and his district chief and also his captain recommended him based on that as well. Um, so he has a, he's, uh, he's well liked by his co-workers but it's, it's also his professionalism that, that they admire and as well as the fact that he's just a really good guy. 
Uh, winning this award means to me that uh, the hard work that I do try to put in and everything that I've learned from the people that I do work with, the training that I've gone through and everything that it's fully being recognized. Um, I try really hard just to get the job done and come up with a positive attitude. I remember to drink my morning coffee every day, so uh, I just, I'm glad that that shows. Something that the public may not know is that when you call through 911 for Toronto Fire Services under the NFPA 1221, we have exactly 60 seconds to process your emergency call. Um, so to take your address, in respect to the multiple duplicate streets within Toronto, we have to ascertain a major intersection. And in respect to the information you're providing to us through our critical questions, we have to then develop or confirm on an event type that'll send the appropriate apparatus, crew and training for your specific emergency need. Also, if you call through 911 on a cell phone, we'll get a triangulation ping off of the nearest cell tower. So it doesn't provide us our exact location, which is why our questions are really important. Uh, and if you do call through 911 on your landline, then we get your exact location. So if you don't know where you are, things like your uh, certain landmarks, uh, building signs, names, streets, anything can really help us get uh, the appropriate response to you. My name is Katie Tinkler, I'm a dispatcher with Toronto Police and I've been on for six years. My father was a police officer for 38 years and I've always been interested in policing and this opportunity came up to become a communications operator so I applied and I've been here ever since. Being a communicator means that you get to help somebody in their darkest hour. They don't call you normally because they're having a good day. It's an honour to be a part of a service and to take part in helping somebody when they're at their lowest point or they need help at that very moment. I won the Communicator of the Year Award. I was nominated by a sergeant from 51 Division. He sent up the award here and it was for a call that actually originated in 53 Division. It was a robbery involving a knife at a restaurant. Um, all the units had actually gone home for the day. It was night shift and I got a secondary call in 51 Division for a theft. Um, some of the indicators in the call were kind of similar, um, including a name and uh, it indicated that there was a bicycle involved. So I asked the officers prior to attending to call me and indicated to them that uh, this could possibly be the same person involved and to just uh, use caution and if that was the case, uh, they were wanted for attempted robbery. And when they got there, it uh, was the same person, and they arrested the person and took them to the station. I was able to connect the two events just by indicators in the call, similarities within the information that was given, and thought it would be beneficial for the officers to know, for officer safety purposes, to use caution when approaching this person. So it was more of maybe the right place at the right time and using the information provided to put it together to come up with the end result. What's important for the public to know is that when we ask questions, even though it may be a scary situation or a very heightened situation, all of those questions are important and there's a purpose for that so we can deal with the situation appropriately and effectively from the officer's standpoint. Um, it's good for them to know what they're walking into also. When you call, there's actually a call taker that's speaking to you on the phone, but there's also a dispatcher that's dispatching officers to your location also. So even if we're asking questions at the time, we are asking the questions on our side and the dispatchers are giving the information to the police officers on the road that are heading to the call. Our questions aren't holding up service in any way. So our goal is to provide fast and efficient service to the public and to also keep in mind uh, officer and public safety.